there's something really simple and sweet about grasses and things that you experience along the side of the road on a walk or just, you know, along the edge of your driveway. And so today I wanted to put together a simple bouquet with several different types of grasses. Some of them are dried, some of them are from the driveway. Um, and then there's a couple of things in here like this. Um, Veronica that was grown by Shady Grove Gardens, one of our local growers here. And then I have some scabiosa pods that came wholesale from um, Mayesh Wholesale. So there's kind of like a mixture of things here, but I just find that when there's at least one element in a piece that I'm putting together or that I'm created that connects me to where I am, the time of year that it is, the season, all of those things, it really helps me think through um, just the creation of the piece and sort of that creative process. Um, it's really hard to just get flowers out of a box or have them appear. There's something for me about being able to walk out and notice something that then I can maybe build on for a future project or maybe it just happens to be perfect for whatever project that I'm working on right now. But anyway, today is my ode to grass, so I hope you like it. Um, this is uh, explosion grass and I'm just gonna start, actually I'm gonna start with this. Um, I was really, I know there's a lot of, this is all like very neutral, and this is a pretty intense like pop of color, but with it being light and with it being, with it pointing up kind of like these grasses are growing, I just wanted to, I just wanted to try it. I just wanted to go after it and see what that contrast and color might look like. And you know, this might be something that turns into a design for a client one day, but today I'm just experimenting and seeing um, how I might put this together if it was for a client. So anyway, that's what I'm up to with this right now. So I've just got these balanced in my hand very lightly. Um, I'm not gripping or anything, although, um, you know, my fingers are touching just because I need that little bit of a narrow place right now to get this sort of up and down kind of shape. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna layer in just around and around these different grasses. And I anticipate that this will be a very lightweight piece whenever we're finished with it. And that's something that I always seem to connect to this, um, the pieces that I don't have any rules with, I guess you could say, or not rules, but any constraints or any requests or um, requirements that need to be met with something. I think that is something that you'll always find in my work that has kind of come out over the years, I guess, and um, probably just reveals a little bit about what I hope to leave the world with. And that's just a sweetness and a lightness and think that sometimes the things that we're drawn to and the flowers that we choose and the way that we arrange them, they can really tell us a lot about ourselves, the path and life that we're on and um, help us know if we need to keep going or turn around and adjust a little bit. So anyway, this arrangement feels really nice and true to me right now, which is fun. So we make all kinds of things here at Team Flower and um, try to demonstrate a lot of different types of techniques and styles to help people who um, may be trying it for the first time or maybe looking for just a fresh take on something. And um, it's fun to be able to have the freedom today just to experiment and to let you be a part of that. I think that cultivating creativity in our lives and just setting aside some space to uh, notice things and to clue in and to create an environment that is not 
filled with pressure or expectation to let yourself make something and maybe not finish it or maybe not like it or maybe come back and try it again tomorrow like that's all an important part of this process and while there are very distinct client wants and needs that come about I think it's important to take some time away from that aspect and to prepare for something that might be coming in the future or something that might just be for now and for today. I think it's important to do that. First. Tricky thing about grasses is that they have the little, like I call them knee joints, <laughs> um, but the little joints in them that can be a little bit brittle and break. So if you ever do need to order them for your product, just order a couple more bundles. It's never really an expensive product. That way you'll have room for some broken stems and I'll be all right. How fun are all of these textures together? And I do like this repetition and shape with the colors being different. Um, that's enough contrast for me at least to be all right with that. Sometimes if you've got too many similar shapes in an arrangement, it can start to look a little bit messy. But in this particular piece, I think it's just the right thing. For weddings and things where you really have to go heavy on production. I think it's so important to have systems and patterns and unless you are an extremely, and I mean extremely uh, high-end designer creating custom pieces for every single part of a wedding, which I don't ever actually see happen very often anyway, um, I think it's really important to develop some patterns and this process of taking some time to work with some different types of ingredients, different types of combinations and different types of placement patterns are things that can then be put into production later but experimenting with this for the first time under a high stress, high pressure situation can be really taxing and if you give yourself the expectation that every single event that you do has to be you know something completely new for you that you're not you know maybe a hundred percent comfortable with I can really um that can really wear you down so if you happen to be watching and you feel like that I hope that today I can just relieve some of that pressure and invite you to um, maybe separate those things out a little bit and maybe you've got some products that sell really really well and you get your profit margins going so well on those and then you've got plenty of room and you've got plenty of time um, to do some of these exercises and this testing it's easy to get into these stress cycles where it's just the same thing over and over and over again. You almost don't have time to think about what you're doing, whether or not it's what you, whether or not it's beneficial or helpful. Um, so as a business owner, I feel like that that's just a really important piece of the puzzle for all of us to guard our hearts and
give ourselves a little bit of freedom. This is very sweet. You know, I think I might have a fern. I want to try in this. I'm going to run and get it in a second. And it might be the right thing and it might not be. And either way, we're just experimenting and seeing. But it's interesting, like even these scabiosa pods, I'm just noticing like with the addition of this bright blue, it just depending on how the light hits it, I can actually see a little bit of blue popping out in those, which I think that's what's one of the things that's so incredibly fascinating about color is how the combinations of it really affect and change the way that something uh, would otherwise look or appear. All right, we're getting to the end here. And I just want to make sure, I mean, this is not a super sculptural arrangement. It's pretty round. I mean, there's just the emphasis on the the texture piece. So I want to make sure that all my ingredients are pretty well balanced. Like I just need to grab a scabiosa back here to balance this out on this side. And then let me just grab the fern and try it and see. I might not go for it, but I mean, this is fun. So the fern, just so you can see it, is probably a little bit too dramatic for this, but it's, it's lightweight, which is kind of where I was headed with it. But if you wanted to pull it out, you could. But I think I'm going to skip it and keep this more meadow-like. And if we just loosen our grip a little bit and tease it out... And then with something like this um, being a little bit lighter, so normally to bind it off, I use this Oasis waterproof tape, but I can kind of tell just with the, the weight that we have of this right now, something with a looser type of grip is going to be important to keep it from doing one of these numbers. So we're going to try this stem tape instead which is a little bit trickier to maneuver because it needs to stick to itself to stick and we've also got to let it be a little bit loose but if you're doing something that is lighter like this um, at first we'll get it on here kind of tight and then since it stretches we'll tease the bouquet back out Gives us the flexibility that we need that would be a little bit trickier with that other type of tape perfect I love that it stands up all by itself already that's a signal of a well-balanced bouquet okay and what do we want to tie this with something light So we'll just take two narrow passes, maybe three. And then we'll do some sweet little streamers. And actually I can leave, well, let's do let's do some little bows. I think that would be sweet and I'll show you how to do that. These are just um, small pins and they are tough, tougher than a regular boutonniere pin, which is nice for bouquets, although not necessarily necessary with this one since it's so light. But we're just going to take this around and tie it 
in a bow. And something that's kind of fun um, that you might want to try is just like layering just exactly what we did, but you can actually layer multiple bows just like on top, on top, on top uh, to create a fuller type of ribbon look if you'd like. And then for these little, if you're making the bows, for these little pieces here that didn't come out quite perfect. You can take a pin in there let's do it one more time. You can take a pin and straighten it out if need be. So like right in here you can just move this around to get it right where you'd like it to be. And then I just want to make sure that my other pin is covered up and we are rock and rolling and ready to roll. That's my fun little pan. Probably only weighs half a, <laughs> half a pound. It's very light and very easy. And um, you might happen to have a client in your future that this is the right fit for. And we got to experiment and test it out and try it today. And it was really fun and great to be here with you. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Kelly. You can find more at